In this video, we'll discuss a few different types of secondary output that you can get out of a ray marching scene with Ray TK. It builds on concepts introduced earlier in the series, so I recommend at least watching the concept section and the depth and output buffers section before watching this one. We'll be covering a few different types of outputs. Object ID, which masks specific objects. Step count, which shows the number of ray marching steps taken for each pixel and near hit, which shows where rays pass close to objects in the scene. First, we'll need to set up a basic scene to work with. We're gonna run through this part quickly since it isn't the main focus of the video. Open the palette using the Alt-R shortcut and create a ray march render 3D. I'm gonna set the resolution here to make it fit in the side panel, but you don't necessarily have to do that. and then add a null top to the first output so that you can see the result. With the renderer selected, use the Alt-Shift-R shortcut to open the Editor Tools menu and choose Add Look at Camera. I'm gonna set the position on the camera to zero, two, and five and then the FOB angle to 80. Next, we'll create a few SDFs. Open the palette again and create a box frame SDF. And we're going to leave the settings on the defaults. Then create a torus SDF and set the axis to Z, the radius to one and the thickness to 0 0.5. Then create a sphere SDF and set the radius on that to 1.2. Then select all three SDFs and open the editor tools menu again with Alt Shift R and under arrange SDFs, choose simple union and then we're gonna connect the arrange to the first input on the renderer. Then on the arrange, switch on enable translate. And then under translate two for the torus, we're going to set the position to one, 0 0.5 and zero. And then for translate three for the sphere, we're going to set the position to negative 1, negative 1, and 0. And that's it for the scene setup. The first type of output that we'll discuss is the object ID output. It lets you extract a mask which shows which pixels in the renderer are showing for a particular shape. Let's say you wanted to apply some post-processing like a blur or color manipulation but only apply it to one specific object in the scene. You can do that by first assigning an ID to the particular SDF, and then grabbing an object ID mask out of the renderer. Now create an inject object ID operator, and we're gonna insert that between the torus and the arrange. Then we're going to set the object ID here to 1. You can also pick any other number, but let's just stick with 1 for now. Then select the renderer. Open the Editor Tools menu with Alt-Shift-R and choose Select Object ID Mask. This will switch on Object ID Output in the renderer and create an Object ID Mask Operator. And on this operator, we're gonna set the object ID here to one or whatever the number is that you used when you were assigning the object ID earlier. Then create two null tops connected to each of the outputs here. The object ID operator gives us two different outputs. The first one is a mask where the 
indicated object is white and then all the other parts are black. And you can use this to mix between different tops to selectively apply effects and so on. The second output takes that mask and applies it to the renderer's main color output so that you see only the colored parts of that one object. And note how if you move the camera around like this, it will update appropriately to block off whatever parts of the object are hidden by other objects in the scene. Next up is the step count output. Select the renderer and open the editor tools with Alt-Shift-R. And under Select Output Buffer, I'm going to choose Step Count. This will switch on that type of output in the renderer and then create a render select with Step Count selected. Create a null top and connect it to the first output so that you can see the results. The step count output shows the number of steps that each pixel's ray took as it marched through the scene before hitting a surface or passed out of the scene or hit the maximum step count. In the top viewer, right click and in your network editor, you do that in here. Right click and switch on display pixel values and then go to normalized split. This will show each of the different channels, the R, G, B, and A, separately, and for each one it will scale it to a 0 to 1 range based on the minimum and maximum values shown in there. In the red channel, this output has the raw number of steps. So you can see that number down in the bottom there as we move around here. That number will be an integer, and it will generally be much larger than 1. So viewing it directly and a top isn't going to work well because its tops are generally just showing a 0 to 1 range of pixels, so all of those will show up as white. But if you're viewing it in normalized split, it automatically scales it so you can see it more easily. In the green channel, that same count is scaled by the maximum number of steps that are configured in the renderer. And that's set in the renderer's settings on the settings page under max steps. So by default, that's 256. So the values in the green channel are scaled from a 0 to, in this case, 256 range. So they'll always be between 0 and 1. If you want to use just that one channel, you can use a reorder top. And on that, you can change the channels all to green. And so that way it will show that those values from the green channel, which are those ones that are scaled to that 0 to 1 range, and it'll use those for all four channels. Now recall from the concepts video how ray marching works by marching a point along a ray for each pixel. And at each point, it checks to see what the closest surface is to that point, and then it knows that it can go at least that far without hitting anything, so it takes a step of that distance and then checks again, and then repeats that process until it either gets close enough to a surface that it's decided that it's hit, or it exits the scene area, or hits that maximum step count and gives up trying. So as a ray passes close to a surface, the distances are going to get smaller, so it'll take shorter steps and more steps. The result is that this output, which counts the steps, produces larger values where rays get close to surfaces. And you can use that as a way to create a glow around surfaces. But because this output is counting steps, if you zoom in, and this may not come through on YouTube, but it should come through in Touch Designer if you're viewing it yourself. But there will be hard discontinuities where value goes from you know, one number of steps to another. So there will be rays that may take two steps, and there may be rays that take three steps, 
but there won't be any rays that take two and a half steps, so you'll always get a hard discontinuity between those. Sometimes that's okay, but in some cases, if you're using that to produce a glow effect, it can produce some render artifacts that may not be what you're looking for. An alternative that produces a similar effect is the near hit output. So select the renderer again, open the editor tools with Alt Shift R, and under select output buffer, we're going to choose near hit. So this will like enable that type of output in the renderer and create a render select to access that output. So create a null top so you can see the results. And I'm going to hook this up here and go back to normalized split. Near hit output is similar to step count in that it shows where rays come close to hitting surfaces. But instead of just counting the steps, it tracks how much the ray was near the surface along its path. So at each step, it checks to see whether it's within range of what it considers near, and how close it is, and how long that step is, and then combines that into an estimate of how much nearness the step contributed to the total for that ray. So it's still an estimate, but it's better at smoothing out discontinuities when the step count changes from one pixel to another. So in the red channel here is that accumulated amount of nearness. And then in the green channel, it's the number of steps that qualified as being near. So this is kind of like what you would get in the step count output, where there'll be hard discontinuities between steps. But unlike the step count output, there are settings that you can use to customize the behavior of this. So we're just going to take a look back at the red channel, which is that amount of nearness. And on the renderer, if you go to the settings page, you can scroll down, and there are a few settings related to customizing the near hit behavior. So first, there's the range, which changes the distance from surfaces that are considered to be near. And then there is the fade, which smooths out the area from where it considers to be near to not near, and it does a kind of smooth transition between those instead of just doing a yes or no, this is or is not near. So that'll help with smoothing out some of those discontinuities. In certain combinations of settings, you may still end up with some in some cases, but it's still going to be a better, clean, a smoother output than with step count, or if you're not using any fading at all. There is also a minimum hit distance setting that you can switch on here. And if you change that, let's see, increase our range here, you can change the minimum distance that is considered to be near, so it kind of pushes out that zone of nearness away from the surfaces a little bit. So with different combinations of these settings, you can get some different effects in the output there. And that's it for this section. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next video in the series. Check out my Patreon for access to scene files, exclusive tutorials, and more. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe.